Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Godot game engine, specifically Godot 4, and even more specifically, Godot 4 2D feature support. Now, this was recently focused on uh, the Godot engine blog about new features that are coming in 2D, and I decided to showcase them in action. Now, if you're a regular this channel, you are probably waiting for Godot, ha ha ha, 4 to come along. And one of the big features there is the new underlying Vulkan renderer. And part of that new features and functionality gives us new 2D support. We can do some really cool stuff in this new version, and that's what we're going to look at today. Now, i got to warn you, what you see in front of you, this is a nightly build of Godot. I literally built this about a half an hour ago. The stability is questionable. So hopefully things go without a hitch, but if you want to check out what we are showcasing today, I just got to warn you right up front, you are going to need to build it from scratch, and you are going to encounter some bugs. Now, this lovely scene here, it's really got nothing to do with the video. I just thought it made for a nice and pretty thumbnail, having an Ultramine fighting a uh, Alpha Legion uh, Marine. So, uh, yeah, let's move on from there. It did look pretty, but now we're going to move on to something less pretty, but very, very cool. So stay with me. So first thing we're going to do is create a new sprite. This is a walled texture. Uh, pretty straightforward right so far. Actually, the second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Yeah. And we're going to create a new 2D scene, like so. And then we're going to create our texture. Nothing really magical there. A little bit bigger than I want it to be. So let's scale this guy down to 0.5 and 0.5. Oops, that was not a point. 0.5. All right, there we go. We have a wall in our scene. Nothing too magical so far. But what I actually want to do is get rid of this texture completely. Go away. What we instead want to do is showcase the brand new canvas texture. Now, the canvas texture has some superpowers. Specifically, it has diffuse maps, normal maps, and specular maps. Now, you can use these three combinations to basically add fake 3D to your 2D images. Plus, there are a number of tools out there for creating a normal map from a 2D map. I featured some of them on this channel in the past. So now that we have this new uh, canvas texture set up, let's bring in our color channel in the diffuse. We will bring in our normal channel into the normal map right here. And then finally, uh, we will bring in this displacement map and use it in our specular channel. So now what happens is when we have the, uh, the light interacting with this guy, you're going to see more detail than you would otherwise. Now onto the topic of lights. As I mentioned earlier on, lights have been overhauled. You can now have uh, multiple lights in the scene, and there is a new type of light, a directional light. We will look at that in just a minute. But first, let's look at some of the details here with point lights, and we're going to show off some of the new functionality there uh, with the, uh, what was the word, canvas texture over there. So we've got the new point light here. We're going to need a map for it. So let's just bring in this texture to control it. It's just a, a gradient image. So it's going to get weaker as it goes out to the edge until the point that it turns off completely. So there is our map in action right over there. We could make it bigger. We could, um, so if I really want, let's, we could scale that texture out to have the impact of this texture be more and more. You're not seeing a whole lot of effect right now. So let's go ahead and we can crank the energy on this light up. There you go. So now you're starting to see, see the underlying texture details. You see the grout lines and so on. That is the effect of the new um, canvas texture combined with the new lighting system. Also, keep in mind, you can have as many lights as you want. They will all be drawn and rendered in a single pass. Now, of course, there is computational overhead, but it's, it's linear overhead as opposed to... Um, you know, I suppose it was an exponential before. No, it wasn't exponential, but it was definitely, it might have been logarithmic. So here you can see new light in action. I'm going to go ahead and we'll clone that guy. So now we have two lights and we could do something like make that one red and we clone that guy again. And we'll make that one uh, green like so. And we clone that guy one more time and we will make that guy blue. So we got our whole RGB spectrum going on here and we kind of look at the interaction between the various different lights. So we see here we go into the red and uh, blue went together and we now have purple. Let's go grab our green and bring our green into the space and you will see the effects on the various different colors. Definitely really cool on the lighting and definitely cool with the underlying canvas item. So you can see here again, the texture lines and the grouting that's what the uh, normal map buys you. And you can get some really cool uh, lighting effects as a result of this change. Another thing we can do on the level of lighting, let's get rid of our three little point lights here, or four point lights, I mean. And now I'm going to cross my fingers and pray this works because I'm adding an occluder and this has been buggy. All right, so I'm gonna add a brand new occluder into the scene, I'm going to edit mode. So you got this warning here, I gotta define a polygon for it. Hopefully I can now, yes. Great. 
All right, so I'm going to set up a light occlusion zone. That is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, it stops lights from going into that area. So you see the area underneath this guy is darker. Uh, eventually, it'll tell us, okay, we're good. It's saying that we got to set up the um, uh, polygons on it, but we've done so. So let's duplicate that. Okay, it fixed. All right, so there we go. We've got two light occluders in our scene. The new thing we can now add, we'll go up here again, and we've got that directional light. So we've got directional 2D light. And we'll bring that into the scene. You'll see it is available right there. Its position doesn't really seem to matter. It seems to be more of a, a global level light. But what I'm going to do now is come in here and turn shadowing on. Like so. So what you're going to see is the shadows down below it. So we can have shadows on. We can filter them. We can filter them a little bit. Smooth out the filter or not. So with our light selected, we're going to go up and turn the intensity up. Like so. So there you're seeing the shadowing of this directional light. And directional light allows you to do exactly that. So what I can now do, and like I said, this position doesn't seem to do a darn thing. Well, it, it might have, no, it doesn't do anything. So it doesn't really matter where you position the light. What is key with the directional light is the direction. So see here with rotation? Well, let's change the axis of the light. And there you're seeing the effect on the shadows. So now you can have directional 2D lights. And that is also Pretty cool stuff. You'll also notice the interaction with the underlying uh, normal map from our canvas texture as well. So obviously these things all work together. Um, so that is, yeah, that is the new directional light. Again, the position of it doesn't seem to make a difference. You do have control over a couple things, how far it can go in total. And you've also got control over height. Now height is on the, the Z axis. So kind of like how uh, high or low the light goes. And you see the, the impact of changing out the height distance is available right there. Otherwise, yeah, so you got control over how far up down Z it will go and on the layers. And you can also light mask it or call it uh, right there as well. So that is the new directional light. And that is a pretty cool new feature. I do have to say so. So let's go back to the Space Marines for a second here. And I'm gonna showcase another new feature. So we got a Space Marine here, and this, this bugs out a bit. I don't know why this is happening, but it's going to cause our guy to get um, darker. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop, there's also an issue here with selecting stuff. I can't scroll down. Every time I mouse over, it causes issues. Okay, so now we have two Space Marines, and the first Space Marine is childed to the second Space Marine. And what we can now do, and this generally you wouldn't use on two objects against each other, is you can actually clip them. So we can go to visibility. There is a new feature here called Clip Children. And what you're noticing is that second Space Marine, it is now being clipped within the round of the first one. So if I move him around, he can only be drawn within the constraints of the other image. So this will give you the ability to, to, to recreate some sp certain special effects, mask things off. Now I think it is a bug that uh, the underlying image gets darker when this is enabled. I don't know why that is happening, but if you want to be able to clip one sprite to another, you do now have that ability. Uh, so the child then will only clip off in the area where it overlaps its parent. Once again, clip, and there you see the underlying Space Marine is clipped to the parent. Now, again, I don't understand why the parent is becoming darker. I think ultimately that is actually a bug, unfortunately. Uh, another neat new ability that we've got here, let me just drop a new scene here, is sometimes you're gonna wanna like create a shader that affects multiple images, or you wanna say transparent multiple images at the same time. So let's go ahead, we'll create a new scene here. And we've got this new object in place called a canvas group. So I'll go ahead. Give myself focus, select canvas, I hit, all right. So we got this new canvas group here, like so. And now we can start putting things into that canvas group. So let's go ahead and add in a space marine and a trader. All right, space marine and trader marine. There we go, inside of our canvas group. So now when we affect the canvas group, anything you do to that canvas group will apply to all the children in a single draw call. It puts them all into a batch. So for example, if we start modifying the uh, transparency here, so let's go to modulate and we'll just modulate the alpha channel here, the entire hierarchy fade together at the same level. So you don't get into these weird overlap scenarios that you may have in the past. At the same time, if you apply a shader, you can apply a shader to the entire group. And once again, one draw call. So that is definitely a nice new feature as well. 
but probably not quite as sexy as the uh, new lighting for sure. So basically that is it for the hands-on demonstration time. Uh, there is the blog post up there as well. So it kind of runs through some of the features here. Again, one of the big things that everyone's going to get is improved performance and everybody likes to see a speed up for free. Uh, so many internal optimizations. Plus of course they are using Vulkan now, new memory allocation systems, etc. cetera. Uh, make it more efficient to call thousands of draw calls from nodes underscore draw callbacks. Um, many of these improvements will also accelerate GLES 3 and 2 back ends. There is work being done, by the way, to bring GLES to Godot 4, which is cool. Uh, improvements to the 2D lighting, again, is all drawn in a single pass now. And you can have multiple lights, 2D shadows, uh, light textures all use a single atlas, also resulting in improved performance. We saw the new 2D material in action. That was the canvas texture that it gives us the ability to add diffuse normal and specular channels. We saw that in action with, with the grout lines and such as we move those lights around. Directional 2D lights and shadow support. We saw that in action too. The canvas group here turns it into a single draw call. Again, saw that in action. 2D masking and clipping. Uh, this is cool with the new clip children uh, property, but again, I do think that there is currently a bug. I don't know why the parent is dimmed out like that. Perhaps there is a reason and I just missed it. And also there are sign distance fields being added. Um, they were all over the place in the 3D side of Godot. They're also coming in 2D. Uh, in terms of use cases, uh, one common one is circle tracing. New API was added to do this as easily as possible. Here's an example of a long drop shadow, uh, which would be very slow to do with regular shaders, simulating a 2D light shaft. Like so. So that is the new sign distance uh, field functionality that is added in this release. Also, just as I am doing this video, a separate post came up on Godot Engine, and it is an update on the improvements to the tile editor. And this is really nice because the tile editor in Godot is not great. Uh, so hopefully these new improvements do come in place. Uh, chances are I'm actually going to do this. I'll do a hands-on video with the new tile map functionality at some point in the future. Uh, so I'm just going to breeze over this, just make you aware that it's out there. Uh, but we do have some really nice new features of functionality, including different kinds of maps. And uh, basically they've merged the uh, tile set and tile map editors together, which was one of those areas that making your tile sets is a completely separate process was kind of ugly before, but also again, really cool here is you can now switch to isometric and or, um, octagonal and so on tiles as well. So I will follow this up with a secondary video as well, but if you're interested, there is also a blog post up here on an update to the tile editor stuff. Uh, he was hired uh, to work specifically on these new editors, and this is his first progress report of what is going on. So there is going to be some tile map functionality updates coming in Godot 4 as well. I will cover them separately. What I wanted to focus on today was the new 2D features that are there. So we've got new performance, uh, better lighting in a more optimized manner, uh, 2D materials, including the ability to have normal maps and uh, specular maps on your 2D title, on your 2D sprites, uh, directional lights and shadow support, canvas groups, uh, 2D masking clipping, and then finally sign distance fields, almost all of which we saw in action today. Curious to hear what you think. Are you excited for Godot 4? Are you using it for 2D and happy to see that 2D is getting some love? And also very briefly, tile editor progress update. I will link that as well, but I'll probably follow that up with its own video once I get some time to play with that stuff hands-on. So that is Godot 4 2D features and functionality. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.